Uh, my Lords, uh, it's an honour to follow uh, Lord Luce and uh, his last comment where he said he might have to wait 10, 20 or 30 years. Uh, my view is you won't have to wait that long because there is so much activity already between Israel and some of the Arab countries. Can I congratulate my uh, noble friend Lord Howell on, on his report? Lord Howell is someone I have, uh, I have admired over his many years of political service. His knowledge and his wisdom are widely appreciated. And of course I refer the House to my non-financial registered interest as President of the Conservative Friends of Israel. So my Lords, you will understand that I will concentrate on areas that I have some knowledge. And I have a theme for my few words, which is a, it's called a, a blind spot. On Iran, I understand the concentration, obviously, on the nuclear deal. But, my Lords, there's hardly a mention of Iran's support for Hamas and Hezbollah. Now, here in, the, in, in, in Britain, we're prescribing, as we know, the military and not the political wing. And I raised this before, and I don't apologise for raising it again. Hezbollah has 150,000 Iranian rockets in South Lebanon facing Israel. And Hezbollah is prescribed by so many, the United States, Canada, in its entirety, the Netherlands, the Gulf Cooperation Council, the Arab League. But, my Lord, not us. Hezbollah don't distinguish amongst themselves. So could I call again on the government and the minister to look again at the prescribing in full of Hezbollah? Now, I agree with the report that the UK should uh, position itself for a, a better relationship with Iran. But again, as I mentioned, the blind spot is no mention really of the support of terror in, in, in the report. And to turn to the Israeli-Palestinian dispute, um, as has been said, things move so quickly. If you look at uh, paragraph 253, well, President Trump dropped his, uh, where it says President Trump has dropped his commitment to the two-state solution, no, he hasn't. Uh, threat to move uh, an embassy to Jerusalem, no, it hasn't. And David Freeman, the new ambassador, may raise tensions, no, he hasn't either. Uh, but I would like to agree with, my, uh, with uh, the noble lord, Lord Turnberg. Um, and refer to paragraph 266. It says, and I, I quote, a negotiated two-state outcome remains the only way to achieve an enduring peace that meets Israeli security needs and Palestinian aspirations for statehood and sovereignty, ends the occupation that began in 67, and resolves all permanent status issues. And it goes on to say, we condemn the continuing Israeli policy of the expansion of settlements as illegal and an impediment to peace. My Lords, this is totally one-sided. Condemnation, yes, of Israel, but where is the condemnation of the Palestinians' incitement, uh, the Hamas control of Gaza, the rocket attacks, the terror tunnels? It wasn't in the report at all. So, uh, and paragraph 270 talks about the balance of power in delivery of peace lies, again, with Israel. And it says the UK should be ready to support UN resolutions condemning their actions. Again, my Lord's one-sided. I think the best way to show, as it says, the determined attachment to a two-state solution is to encourage the two sides to sit together and, whilst at it, encourage the Palestinians not to be the two sides on their own. Now, tomorrow, as, as Lord Turnberg mentioned, there's a debate on Balfour, the 100th anniversary, and there's so many speakers so perhaps today I could deal with one particular issue. And again, my Lords, another blind spot. The noble Lord, Lord Alderdice, just reminded the House about the second part of the Balfour Declaration, and he was right to do so, and many do. But my Lords, I repeat, this is a blind spot. Let, let me read that last part of the Balfour Declaration that was referred to. It said, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine. But, my Lords, it doesn't end there. There is another end of the sentence. It says, or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. That's what it said. So I remind, my Lords, in 1948, yes, there were 726,000 Palestinians who became refugees. 
But, my lords, there were 856,000 Jews living in Arab lands. In reality, there were two refugee populations were created at that time, Palestinians and Jews displaced from Arab countries. Yet, since 1947, the UN's predominant focus has been on the Palestinians. Over the years, there have been over 170 resolutions on Palestinian refugees, 13 UN agencies and organisations mandated or created to provide protection and relief to the Palestinian refugees, and tens of billions of dollars have been dispersed by the international community to provide for the Palestinians. But during those same years, there have been no UN resolutions, no support from UN agencies, nor any financial assistance to ameliorate the plight of Jewish or other refugees from Arab lands. And I believe it continues to be a serious injustice by the international community to recognise the rights for one victim population, the Palestinians, without recognising equal rights for the other victims of that same conflict, i.e. the Jews, Christians and other refugees from Arab countries. And don't take my words that for proof, and I found this out for, and I, 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 I share it with the House. It was the 22nd of November 1967 when Resolution 242 adopted uh, uh, the words laying down the principles for a peaceful settlement. And it stipulates a just settlement for the refugee problem. No distinction between Jew or Arab. Now, on the 16th of November, a few days before, the UK submitted the draft, and the UK version was not exclusive, calling for a just settlement. Four days later, my lords, the Soviet Union submitted a further draft restricting the just settlement only to Palestinian refugees. But on the 22nd of November, the Security, uh, the Security Council gathered, and the UK version was voted on and adopted unanimously. The Soviets did not want to vote on their draft, and although Ambassador Kuznetsov at the time later said the Soviet government would have preferred the adoption of the Soviet draft. So, thus, attempts by the Soviets to restrict the just settlement to the refugee problem only to the Palestinian refugees was not successful. The international community adoption of the UK's inclusive version signalled a desire for Resolution 242 to seek a just solution for all my lords, including Jewish refugees. And in conclusion, today we had, or last night we had the government report. Today there was a BICOM research document, the Britain-Israel Communications and Research Centre. And they were, it's called Supporting a Two-State Solution, Effective UK Policy to Boost Israeli-Palestinian Relations, published today. And I, I picked up the five key points which I think I share with the House and I think are very relevant. The first is the role of the UK in concert with others in the international community could help create conditions for a peace process to succeed and bring about the two-state solution. Two, areas where the UK are well placed to make practical difference, increasing funding to train Palestinian security forces and promoting civil society uh, initiatives. Thirdly, the UK could use its good standing in the world we're on the United Nations Security Council. We have good relationship with the Arab states to promote new opportunities for diplomatic engagement. The UK finance for the Palestinian Authority should be based on appropriate measures to ensure financial aid reaches appropriate places and recipients and funds are, no, are not mis, uh, misused. And finally, with budgets under pressure, the UK should ensure support for international initiatives that have a positive impact on improving conditions for the future. My Lords, there is hope and one should never give up. But I urge the committee to eradicate blind spots and hope that the UK will do all it can to bring the Palestinians and Israelis around a table to hammer out a solution that I believe is within reach.